And as you see down, may you never go down in life. In Jesus' name. I want to thank God for this opportunity to minister, to speak his mind. I also want to thank Bishop and all the pastors and mom. And all of you, you are good people. Look at somebody, tell them you are a good person. <laughs> yes, and you mean it. Don't just say because I've said it. Hallelujah. When I was preparing, I prepared on a message called Overcoming Disappointments and Frustrations in Life. I thought that's what the Lord wanted me to speak. But when I woke up this morning, I started fear, f- feeling like I want to talk about blessings. And then it was confirmed as we were praying with the ministry team. Uh, when they prayed for me. They, they surrounded me and spoke prayers that the Lord may anoint me. So I'm anointed. <laughs> and the word Esau came to me when I was being prayed for. And I knew that God wants me to speak about blessings. I had to run to the media team to change my, my message, to give them the new message. Uh, hallelujah. That means if I kanyanga you, <laughs> it is not me. <laughs> I want to give a disclaimer, okay? Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you still love me? Yes. yes, I also love you. And I believe we shall be loving each other even after the, this message. Now, blessings. We'll be talking about seven types of blessings. However, before I come to the little message, allow me to speak about uh, Esau, a little bit about Esau. Father, in the name of Jesus, we once again invite you. I pray that you use me, Lord. Let me not speak my words, but your words. I pray that you open our ears, that we shall be able to connect and hear what you are saying to the churches. We give you praise, honor, and adoration in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. I was once a a school teacher. I taught physics and maths. And I liked it. But I've never understood the altar. Uh, any time I can, I think the presence of God is awesome. Because I, 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 don't, I feel like it is not me. You know, somebody that is used to speaking before high schoolers, college students, you think you are, you are used to. But any time I come here, I, I find it new. Hallelujah. So if I'm going to stammer, please don't judge me. All right? Hallelujah. Again, we have our friends here with us, and I love them. Thank you so much for coming to attend my service. Today, I'm the man of God. (laughs) So for their sakes, I will try very much in order to switch to Swahili. Hallelujah. And you know, I'm used to Changanyali. A few months ago, a few months ago, the Lord told me not to. (laughs) Thank you, ma'am. A few months ago, the Lord told me to to be disciplined in my preaching. I think he wants to make me an international speaker. <laughs> but, uh, you know, sometimes we hear God and we don't act immediately. Is it true? So I've not aligned my thinking well, such that I can finish a whole message in English. You know me. So, today I have a test. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I was in Form 1, uh, I, I was in Form 1 in the 80s. There was a lot of bullying for those of us that you remember those days. And so we used to hide ourselves in the CU, Christian Union. And we would pretend to be saved. <laughs> because that was a safe place. After, pre- after preps, we go to the CU. And then by the time the CU is over, we go and meet the, the, bully, the bully guys as, asleep. So when I was given a test, they thought I'm born again. <laughs> I was given a chance to give a testimony to greet the people of God. <laughs> Do you know what happened? I started looking back thinking that it is the person behind me. And then the brother said, no, 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 it is you. You, you, you. I was a bit brown that, those days. 
I don't know what happened. Ni maisha. It is that brown brother. So I, I came up. I knew it was me. But I was pretending to, looking back, knowing it was me. So when I came to the front, I did not have a single word to say, even praise the Lord. So do you know what happened? The door was not very far <laughs> from the pulpit. It's just like in this church. <laughs> and I hit the door running. <laughs> May the Lord have mercy upon me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's talk about Esau. Esau missed his blessings. This is not part of my notes. And for two reasons, you know Esau and Jacob? I don't have the time to take you back to the background. But I'll, I'll mention a little bit. Esau was older than Jacob. And when they were growing up, Esau was a hunter. And uh, Jacob was a farmer. The father was Isaac. The mother was Rebecca. Hallelujah. Now, Esau, for one reason or the other, my thinking, I've not read it in the Bible, his relationship with the mother wasn't very, very. They were both children of Rebecca. True? But Rebecca seemed to be Ege Mary, eh? leaning towards Jacob, who was the second born. Maybe for some reasons. Hallelujah. So when it was time for uh, Isaac to bless Esau, to bless his children, of course he would start with the first born. So the first born blessings did not, uh, they, may, they, they, they were for, for Esau, not for uh, Jacob. But uh, Esau missed the, the first born blessings. Hallelujah. And so when he came back and realized what has happened, the father said, I have already given the blessings. And you know the blessings of God are not revocable. Even the blessings of the father were not revocable. He could not revoke from Jacob and bring now to Esau. Even, even though he knew, Isaac knew that he had been conned by the mother and the, the second born son. Hallelujah. And so Esau cried aloud and asked the father, have you not remained, is there not a single blessing remaining that you may give it to me? And Isaac said, the blessing that I'm giving you that's remaining, you will fight. You will serve your brother. But the day you get tired, you break the yoke from off your neck. Hallelujah. And you'll be able to, to achieve your blessings. Now, let's go back a little bit. Esau, one reason he missed his blessings, as I've just said, allow me to say this. Do you know the father was the head? Isaac. He was the head of the family. And he, see, he was the man that was carrying the blessings. Now, the relationship between Esau and the head was good. But how many people knew or know that the head is normally controlled by the neck? Do you know that? As much as the head is the head, there is the neck. Hallelujah. And that's where Esau missed it. One of the reasons he missed his blessings is because his relationship with the neck was not right. And it is the neck that controls. Hallelujah. I know I'm speaking to somebody. I know you are getting even what I'm not saying. Are you? Hallelujah. That is the first reason. That is relationship with the mother. Because I don't believe the mother would have done that if he loved, if she loved both Esau and, and Jacob equally. Do you think he, she would have done that? She would have been a bad mother. By the way, I still believe she was not a very good mother. And if you do, if you have partiality in your home, now I come back to you. If you are a mother and you love some children better than others, 
you are a Rebecca. Hallelujah. And a Rebecca caused problems between these two people throughout their lives. In fact, at one time, Esau wanted to kill Jacob. He had to run away to his uncle Laban. But that's not my point. My point is, you need to develop a relationship with both the father, hallelujah, and because both are important, say important. Both are important to you. Hallelujah. Sometimes I find myself like I am preaching to the converted. <laughs> I know you love your mothers. Again, if you are the kind of people that give the father when you go home 2,000 shillings when everybody is, is seeing and then in the kitchen you follow your mother and give 5,000 shillings you are also in error. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because both are so important. Both are important. Now, the second reason that Esau missed his blessings is because he took too long. He went, it is Isaac who called him and asked him, I want you to go and hunt and bring me so that I may eat and bless you. Are we together up to there? Hallelujah. Now, when he went hunting, for some reason I don't know, I was not in Israel by then. <laughs> he tarried. Because for people to slaughter a goat, for people to generate an idea, and then for the mother to call his second born son. And for them to talk. And for them to go and look for the, the sheep that looks like a wild animal. And slaughter it. And choma it. Or roast it or boil it. Whatever happened. I don't know. That's how it took too long. Look at your neighbor. Don't fear him or her. Look at her and tell me whether she's an Esau. <laughs> If, if she looks down, if she looks like she's ashamed, she has taken too long to go home. <laughs> she's slowly becoming an Esau, though she's a woman. Are you an Esau or a Jacob? Second reason Esau missed his blessings? Say he tarried. He took too long. Please don't take too long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, that's not part of my message. Allow me to go my, to my message. It's called blessings. And Proverbs 10.22 says, The blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. The blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Hallelujah. Don't mind if, oh, it is there. I told you I had to change the message so I know the, sometimes may, it may take long to come. But the Bible says the blessings of the Lord maketh rich, maketh one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. That which you have received from God it will make you happy. It will make you rich. It will make your life easy without any sorrow. Hallelujah. That's what God is telling us. Genesis 12, verse 2 to 3. Let's start from verse 1. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. I'll make you a great nation. This is God speaking to Abraham. I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Verse 3. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, this is not God speaking to Abraham because Abraham went. By the way, Abraham is one of those waiting for us. Cheerleaders. Anatobia ngangana. Oh, sorry. I have to be in English. <laughs> he tells us, my son, keep on keeping on. I did it and I made it. Hallelujah. So keep on keeping on. Even when things look so hard. Keep on keeping on. Even when the temptations are too big. He says, keep on keeping on. So my point is, God is not speaking to 
Abraham. God is speaking to Jane. God is speaking to John. God is speaking to Aviabo. He says, I'll bless you. I'll make your name great. And in you, Abraham was told all the families of the earth, including us. For you now, all your family members, your generation that will one be called by you. Do you know there is a generation that will be called? I come from a family called Baria Mushagi, the clan of Mushangi. He was our grandfather. He had five wives. <laughs> We, we come from that. There, was a, there will come a time that they will call themselves Barea. Barea Deuri. Hallelujah. I'm talking to you. Barea Mwagi. Hallelujah. That clan, that generation, we've just heard that God is going to make it great because of you. There is a reason God connected you with himself. It is not just for nothing. It is not just because you heard the word and believed. You had been appointed and anointed before the, the beginning of the, God knew you before you were born. You were not born because your mother and your father met. Actually, they met because you were in the mind of God. Even if you are those we used, or the English people used to call the bastard. You know the bastard children? <laughs> The bastards, <laughs> according to the dictionary, English, not me, English dictionary, are those who are born out of wedlock. <laughs> so when somebody calls you bastard, <laughs> don't believe it. Hallelujah. Even if you are born, you don't know your mother or your father. God had you in his mind before you are born. You are not an accident. And you'll be blessed. Hallelujah. God made me speak about blessings because it is your time to be blessed. I had a message that I thought it was the message for you. But because God does not just speak, he says what he means. And he means what he says. Did you hear that? Yeah, God says what he means and means what he says because he's God. And he has elevated his word above his name. He cannot just say, he doesn't. Let me be a a little bit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seven kinds of blessings or seven types of blessings for those that are writing down. And I always encourage the people to write down. Hallelujah. By the way, did I say my name? I have a neighbor. I come from Kiabu who thinks everybody knows him. <laughs> Wherever we go with him, even. Even when I go with him to Kirinyaga, he stands and says, Simuna Nijua. <laughs> he believes, but he is known, but he believes everybody. Now, I also believe here that everybody, my name is Pastor Deuri. Hallelujah. And I'm a husband of one. Amen. I almost forgot. You know, she's, she's not asleep. She's watching me. I have to be very careful. <laughs> Amen. Uh, seventh, are you writing down? Even, even if you write on your phone, I don't mind. If you don't have a... But a book is better because uh, your phone may crash. The message I'm, 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 I'm delivering to you is not from my mind directly. It was written many, many years back. Many. About ten years ago. But it's still the one I'm referring to. Hallelujah. So, You'll go somewhere and find that you are the man of God. And you start shaking because you don't have something written down. That's a piece of advice that you should pay me for. <laughs> Write down even if it is just the, the, the points. Seven types of blessings. Number one, promised blessings. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20, the Bible says, the promises of God for all the promises, I almost messed you. I said the promises of God, but the Bible says for all, all the promises of God, in him are yes, and in him amen, to the glory of God through us. Amen? Let me tell you, my sister, my brother, 
Anything that God has ever promised you, he meant it. For the promises of God are yes and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we don't believe it. But it is true. God believes it. You may not believe it, but God believes it. Hallelujah. So the first category is promised. Sometimes they tarry, but in the end, they will come to pass. I want to remind you of Martha and Mary. Do you know them, the sisters to Lazarus? They knew because Jesus had sent for them. When they sent for Jesus, he said, I'm coming home. They were friends. Now, he tarried. For four days, he was not with them until the brother died. But you know what happened? Because God is God, and because Jesus was the son of God, the miracle happened. Did it happen or not? Did Lazarus come back to life? And the miracle was bigger if he would not have tarried. If he had come the second day, he would have, he would have healed a sick person. But because he tarried, the miracle became bigger. Hallelujah. Can you see what I'm trying to say? That a few months ago, I was a linesman in a wedding. We were with mom in a place that was very, very cold. <laughs> very cold. You need to enjoy your lad. And I'm not saying you should not go, but enjoy Kenya. I don't want to speak of shivering because it was more than shivering. And, and, and I was a, li a linesman, a groomsman in a wedding for somebody that has waited for God for more than 50 years. Around 55 years. But God came. The promises that God had with her or what she had told God came to. Why? Because the promises of God are yeah, and in them we say, Amen. Amen. What is this thing you have waited for, for too long? It is because God wants to show, to manifest himself. That's why you have tarried. If, if Sarah did not get a child in her 80s, we would not be speaking of a miracle. If she got a child, immediately after getting married to Abraham, it will still be a miracle, but a smaller miracle. Am I right? But because it happened, we still speak about it today. One reason that you've been waiting for God to do that is because he wants to manifest his, his power. Hallelujah. So the first one is promised blessings. Let's go to number two. They are called service blessings. Service blessings. They come as a result of our service for God. And when I say service to God, I don't mean preaching here. Preaching is good. But that's not what we are all called for. By the way, preaching is not easy. Because we are first judged by our messages. True. So God, God has called you to be a nurser, to be in the hospitality department, to be in the medical field when we need first aid, you are the one we rush to do. It is service to God. And the Lord says, if you receive a prophet, in the name of a prophet, you receive a, a prophet's reward. Because you are serving Bishop and his vision, you will be rewarded the same as Bishop if you do it faithfully. Of course, you cannot be the bishop. Can I be the bishop? I cannot. I went to America one day and they started calling me a bishop. I told them, you, my bishop is coming. Stuck <laughs> Shida, Mimi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, service blessings come as a result of our service to God. It is a reward for work done, not work, not work undone. You know, 
There is your potential. You are not rewarded for your potential. I told you I taught physics. There was potential energy and kinetic energy. Now I'm talking about kinetic energy. What you have done? Can you see sweating? I'm struggling. <laughs> because of, of the heat. I, am, I will be rewarded for this. And for you, if you, inter if you intercede for me, you will also be rewarded with me. See you? Am I right? Ah, so you remove this. How can I complain of, of heat? You have already seen my smartness. <laughs> <laughs> If you have seen, you have seen. Yes. Number three. Well, I'm not smart. You know, sometimes we think we are smart and we are not. <laughs> sometimes you, you can lie to yourself. That's why you need a, a Jonathan, by the way. This is not part of the message. You know a Jonathan and David? A Jonathan is somebody who tells you the plain truth. You are naked before him or her. And don't look for the opposite sex, Okay. Look for your sex. Because he can, somebody that you are not ashamed before him. They'll be able to tell you when. Because sometimes you think what you think is not. Can I go to my that point? Commanded blessings. Commanded blessings. Psalms 1 that 3. We read about verse 1 to 3. Then I'll be talking a little bit about it before I go to number 4. Uh, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edges of his garments. It is like the dew of Hammon, descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing and the life forevermore. What am I saying? When you are in unity, Amen. God commands a blessing. Allow me to speak this. I had not told the bishop. But without our unity, do you know what, where we are sitting upon? For those of you that have bought land, you know the value of the land that we are sitting on. Am I right? But this would not have been possible without us holding Hads like one man. Amen? This is a ladder that costs billions. Not millions. I've never been able to fathom a billion myself. Because a billion, I think a billion is too big for my small head. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when you are in unity, great things happen. Allow me to say this. When I got my first car, I didn't have money. But my wife had saved around, around 50 or something thousand for our Christmas. But I felt the urge, it's time for me to, to own a car. And when I went for it, just, you know how we do things by faith? Hallelujah. And by the way, faith is more real than reality. Do you know real? What am I saying? I'm saying you may be wearing white. Now faith, if God sees you are wearing black, it is more real than what we can see. Right? So, I didn't have money myself. But I went out to the yards, seeing, looking. I know I'm speaking to somebody. Don't look at the size of your pocket. Look at the size of the pocket of your God. Go to the yard. Even try them. And don't go if you don't have a, a driving license. You are a joker. <laughs> Recently, Bishop prayed for people that want to go to travel abroad. Remember? But he only prayed for people with the passports. All the rest were, say jokers, that I have a desire, that my vision is to, to travel to the U.S. Oh, How? Unless you swim to the U.S. <laughs> now, I'm talking about commanded blessings. There, where there is unity, is where God commands a blessing. I'm saying that 
Unity is key. I'm talking about the power of agreement. Amen? Power of? Power of agreement. I don't have time to tell you about how the car came, but the car came. With the 50,000, but unity. Hallelujah. Unity and faith. I saw myself driving from Karen. I called, those days we, we had Reverend Mwede. I called him and told him, I'm driving from Karen towards Zimmerman. I personally was not believing it. <laughs> Leave around him. He asked me, your own car? I told him yes, but I was not believing it. Imagine somebody with zero money, but driving towards Zimmerman. A new car, not an old car. Because of the power of faith and the power of agreement. Hallelujah. For those of you that are married, please take a cue from what I'm saying. Most of all the things that God has given us as a family, including children, <laughs> Is when we are united. Of course, you know days come. Ah. You know there are days of up and days of. Ah. Those that are not married think that that the life is not in your way. <laughs> Even when you are anointed, by the way, the more anointed you are, the harder the battles. <laughs> but always fight for the power of. Agreement. That's where God, it is not God sends a blessing. God commands. Do you know how to command? Do you know? Command. God commands. But I also want to tell, give you a, uh, something else. Because the word of God does not come from him void. When it is sent to you and to your family and you are not together, it does not go back void without doing what it had been sent to do. When you are mteja, because sometimes at hamzungumziani, you are not speaking to each other. You become amteja. Do you know mteja? Do you know? Do you understand mteja? It is when I call you and your phone is off. I am not able, even whatever I wanted to do with you, I cannot. That's how frustrated the messengers of God become. Because they want to bless you. But because there is no unity. And let me tell you, there is somebody who knows how to fight unity. He fights unity. Whenever you find things happening, unity being fought, you should know that your blessing is on the way. Do you remember that the first day that Daniel started praying, God sent the answer? But for 21 days, the, 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 the miracle had been heralded by the principalities. So when you are just about to get your blessing, when God has commanded a blessing your way, it goes. Do you know a detour? Have you ever heard of the word detour? Or service lane, it bypasses you. Oh, bypass is a better word. If you want to go to Mombasa from Erodoret, you can bypass Nairobi. You either use the northern bypass or the southern bypass. Now, your miracle bypasses you when you are not united. Fight, fight for unity. Pursue, pursue unity. Pursue love. The things that brought you together should help you stay together. Amen? Hallelujah. Say commanded blessings. Look at your neighbor. <laughs> One pastor told the members, <laughs> and part of the members was a monkey and a baboon. <laughs> so, the pastor said, tell your neighbor that he's, he's beautiful. <laughs> the baboon looked at the monkey <laughs> and told the pastor, tell him, I don't want to lie in the church. 
<laughs> Tell him yourself. I don't want to lie in. <laughs> because he looked at the monkey and, and wondered, where is the beauty? <laughs> and unfortunately, he had also not looked at himself. <laughs> but that's not my point. Let's go to demanded blessings. Demanded blessings. Number four. Matthew 11, 32, I know you know this. Bible says that the kingdom suffers violence and the violence take it by force. In Genesis chapter 32, verse 26, Jacob says, I will not leave this place until you bless me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And again in the book of Numbers, we said Caleb, we see Caleb telling Joshua, give me Mount Hebron. Give me this mountain. It was promised. It was a promised blessing. But now it has become a demanded blessing. There are times you demand your blessings. Alright? Hallelujah. There are times you, you demand. Things don't just come easy. Even as I was told by his father, you will serve your brother. You will struggle. But the day you get tired, now, it comes to a time that you have to demand your blessings. Amen? Amen? Peter and John were, pray, were going to pray. In, and a gate called Beautiful. They had many gates like we have. We have a gate down there. We have another gate here. Maybe we shall get another one. There, are many, there were many gates to the church, to the temple. So they were going to pray. And I believe they were, that was not the first time they had seen the, the, the cripple. But when the cripple cried to them, he wanted money. He only wanted, he thought his, his, the answer to his problem is money. And Peter told this cripple, silver and gold have we none, but such as we have, we give it and, unto you. Now what's my point? The cripple did not believe them, did not understand them. So Peter came and took the cripple by the hand and pulled him hard. And strength came to his feet. What am I saying? Peter did not perform a miracle. The miracle had been performed by God. But he helped him fight for his blessing. Or demand his. Hallelujah. I'm saying this because some of you have been praying for things that were given long ago. I can't see Sunday school here. You are praying for a child. You are a mother, you are a woman, you are married. And God gave a child long ago. But there have been problems. So when you go to bed, somebody is on the other side and the other one is on the other side. You have to demand your blessing. You need to catch somebody and bring him to your side and demand your child. <laughs> Demand your blessing. Some of you think I am being naughty. I know. <laughs> I'm not being naughty. I'm preaching. Demand your. Otherwise, the blessing of a child will not come. You have to fight for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I go to the next? Did you understand that point? Now, that is not upon God now. It is upon you and me for us to get to, to where God wants us to be. It is a partnership between you and It's like when my children were in high school, I wanted them to pass with is it flying colors and go to the best universities. But of course, I couldn't sit for the exam. Though I was a high school teacher, I knew most of what they were being taught. But I could not sit down and do the exam for them. True? They had to do it themselves. What am I saying? As much as God wants to take you to that level, it will take you. I wish I can get this into your medulla oblongatus. <laughs> because you will arise. You will arise. And fight for your blessings. Some blessings you have to fight for. They will not just come. Amen? Even Jesus, 
He once touched somebody with his saliva and mixed with mud. And the person did not see clearly. He said, I can see people but like trees. I can't recognize them. He had to touch him again. If Jesus had to do it the second, who are you? Who are you? There's this sister in Uganda. Her husband had died of HIV. So she, she was also HIV, though she was a sister in Christ. You know somebody can bring you. Are we together? You can be born again. But then somebody messes with your life. I normally tell the youth, take care whom you connect with. Because he or she can lead you to heaven or to, or to hell. Now this sister, when, when her husband died and she went to the doctor and she was diagnosed HIV positive, it is those days that HIV was such a big issue. Nowadays it's still there, but it's like, I think ARVs and whatever has happened. Nowadays people don't fear it too much, like those days. When it first came, I was doing my A-levels, when I first heard of HIV and AIDS. And you were even fearing, leave alone this corona thing, you are not greeting people. It is the medics that had told us not to greet each other because of the virus. But those days we were telling ourselves, if we would see somebody slimming, <laughs> we would start running away from them. Hallelujah. And you know you can slim because of many reasons. Some good, some not very good. True. Now, what I'm saying, what am I saying? Uh, we are on demanded blessings. Isaiah 41 verse 21. The Bible says, present ye strong reasons before God. Present strong reasons before God. Present your case, says the Lord. Bring forth strong reasons, says the king of Jacob. Or says the king of DCIK, Shiloh Worship Center, the place of breakthrough. Present strong reasons. I wanted my children, once again, allow me to use them. They are here. I, I, I didn't know I would mention them. I want them to do good. So I, I would promise them things that would cost me, like a bicycle. A bicycle would cost around 10,000 those days. And 10,000 for a civil servant is not little money. Because my salary maybe was 15,000. But I would promise them. Because I want them to perform well. So when they would get to where I had told them, if you number one to three, I'll buy you a bicycle. When at the end of the time they would achieve that, they would not come to beg me for a bicycle. Oh, daddy, no, no, just buy me a bicycle, daddy. Buy me, daddy. No, 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 no. Some things you need to learn from children. They would come with a report form. Daddy. <laughs> daddy. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't even say anything. I would know what they are. They were presenting what? Strong reasons. Hezekiah presented strong reasons to God. And he was added 15 more years. Present strong reasons. Don't just come for prayer and, and, and cry and cry and cry. Like another sister. I had, she went to, for prayer and she removed her ID card and started showing God. <laughs> How many years are these? <laughs> and I'm still praying for a husband. <laughs> Don't come here and, and cry and cry. We think you are a big intercessor. No. Sometimes you can just come and sit down there and talk to God. Actually, God tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, come, let us reason together. Okay? You can just sit down with God and have a meeting. You don't believe it? You don't? Me, I do. I believe it for you. Have a meeting with God. He speaks, you speak. Okay? Because God speaks. There was a book we learned. I did CRA in high school. There was a book called God Speaks to Men. I don't know whether it's still there. Did you find it in your time? God speaks too. Do you know it is still true even today? 
God speaks to and to women. By the way, you are sons of God. Don't think I'm being past you like Rebecca. <laughs> God speaks to, to men. It is still true even today. Come, let us listen together. Some of the things you've been praying for, you got them long time ago. But you have not started enjoying them. I told you another day that part of the tears that we shall be wiped in heaven, Bible says in the book of Revelation, that we shall be wiped our tears. It is because of the cries some people will make when you realize what was yours on earth and you never enjoyed it. You lived like a, a pauper's son, well as all the wealth belonged to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anything you have ever brought to the altar, to the house of God, anything you have done for God, remind him when you go to prayer. Present ye strong reasons. That's God saying, it is not me. Present strong reasons before God. Amen. And by the, by the way, I'm not teaching on prayer. But God forbids us to vain repetitions. Some people can pray for an hour, but in a little sense, they have prayed for five minutes. You keep telling God for a bicycle. Give me a bicycle. Give me a bicycle. When is he deaf? For a whole 30 minutes, you ask you for a bicycle. When I say a bicycle, you understand. I know there are many bicycles. Okay, let me come home. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't do vain repetition. In prayer, it is not about quantity, but quality. Amen? But then you can come to God with your notebook and write him a letter. I do. Personally, I do. I always carry a small one because this big one, I always carry a small one. I write him. And the things I feel like he's leading me to do, I also write them down. Amen? I try always to connect with heaven. Bible says in the Thessalonians, pray without ceasing. I don't only pray during the prayer hour. Even when I'm driving. Even when I'm bathing. When I'm working, I am connected to heaven. Those are some of the times I hear God. Some of the messages I bring you, it is not when I'm kneeling, kneeling down. They just come as I do other things. Hallelujah. Are we together? Prayer is not asking God what to do. But it is seeking to know what God's will is. It is not asking God what to do. It is aligning yourself with what God wants you to do. That's when you find your joy. Amen? Hallelujah. But I'm not teaching about prayer. You don't just demand. You need to show why it should not be denied. The same way you cannot withdraw money from a bank you have not banked. If you don't belong to equity, you cannot go and withdraw from equity. Can you? If you belong to cooperative bank, that's the only place you have authority to go and withdraw. And you cannot overdraw unless you have an arrangement with the bank manager. Amen? So do good. Do good. Do good wherever you are able. Do good in church. Do good in your, to your family. Do good to your neighbors. Do good to the less privileged. Do good. Live a life that we shall remember you when you are gone. Not just to, not, not necessarily to heaven. By the way, God can locate you. Not just to heaven. Let us miss you. There's a girl I met many years back in town. And she greeted me. And then told me she left our church. Yeah, I left your church. I had not even seen her. <laughs> so now, it didn't matter so much. I think she wanted to complain about, do you know the, this is not heaven? By the way, can I come home? Is this heaven? Is Shiloh heaven? I want to tell you for the truth. There are things you will not like with us. There are things you like, there are other things you will not like. Because this is not heaven. Because where, where you are brought up, maybe you are brought up in the... 
in their Corino church where they start at 9, 10 in the morning and they end their service at 4 in the, in the evening. And here we come. And within two hours we are done. You may not like that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's go to number five. Inherited blessings. For those that are writing down. Inherited blessings. You only inherit from your parents. For friends, they are given gifts. You don't inherit, you only inherit from your parents. Amen. So, fatherhood is key. Wherever I go, wherever I am, in Kenya or outside Kenya, I like identifying myself with this church because I feel I belong. Amen? I feel this is home to me. Amen? I love identifying. And I have inherited a lot of blessings through being a son in this house. I've never outgrown my parents. Even when I think something is wrong, if they tell me, go slow, I don't want to listen. There was a time Bishop told me something. <laughs> and I did not heed. <laughs> How many have heard of Desi? Have you heard of the name De Desi? Hey, quite a few. Desi was something <laughs> that was multiplying money. <laughs> you take 100,000, after three weeks, you go and meet, it is 300,000. So, I was working in town about those days. So I would see my friends, who are also pastors, and friends coming, going to Desi, and they would come through my office and tell me, I passed through here with 100,000. Now this is 300,000. But it is just a note, because I have also planted, it was called planting. I have also planted the 300, so after three weeks, I will come and tell you, I'm, I'm worth 900, almost a million. I went to Bishop and asked him about it. And he listened, he listened. He told me, let's go slow. Let's go. Don't, don't, don't rush. I had him. But to be honest, somebody came through my office. He had come with a million. <laughs> and then after three weeks, he told me, I have now, made, it is now three million and I have replanted it. No, after three weeks, I'll be coming. I'll be worth nine. I said, where is the bishop? Is he in town? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not in town. He's in Zimmerman. I rushed to the bank. I had a relationship with the bank manager. I received a loan that was not a simple loan. Not an easy loan. I ran. Followed after my brother. And he was a pastor. A man of God, but not my father. <laughs> And he took me and we planted. I tell you for sure. I cried. <laughs> My wife almost ran away. <laughs> it, it is the same bishop who saved my marriage. <laughs> he and the mom, they spoke to her. <laughs> <laughs> and did not send and spoke to the principal not to send our children home <laughs> because our children were running in Cornerstone so they promised for the time we shall be had, having it rough they will not send our children <laughs> where? <laughs> where? <laughs> you must know your fatherhood you must know where you belong hallelujah Unfortunately, even the man that had taken three million did not get a thing. Because when the thing collapsed, even the multiplied blessings he had, they all collapsed. Together with my cologne, it still pains me. <laughs> it was enough to buy me a plot and a build. It was not a simple loan because I had a relationship with the manager. We knew each other. So he went beyond his... 
he, he, his power of discretion to give me a loan. He thought I was multiplying my business to become bigger. Little did I, he knew that. Well, <laughs> in where I come from, they say, Dina Kuorota. Me kara ke katia. Keheta. Well, Number six, they are called blessings of honor. Blessings of honor. Exodus 20 verse 12. And Ephesians 6, 1 to 2. Exodus 20 verse 12 says, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the Lord, which the Lord your God is giving you. Now, this is not Pastor David saying, it is God himself, Jehovah himself, saying that when you honor your father and your mother, your days will be long. And I want to add something, because the writer of the Bible, it was from God, but a man was writing. I want to say, they will be long and good. Because you can live long days and not very good days. Am I right? But I want you to read long days, to, to live long days and better days. Amen? You enjoy your life. You enjoy your marriage. You enjoy your business or your employment. Hallelujah. Now, for you to get that, you need to honor who? Of course, we honor God. But I'm talking about what we have just read. Honor your father and? Now, and I'm taking you back home. Because I have some of you, you have issues with your parents. And I want to tell you something. One of the reasons Esau was struggling, I, I take you back to where we started, is because his relationship with the mother was not very proper. Now, part of the reasons you have been struggling, somebody, a man, a brother came to me. I don't want to tell you whether he is from here or not. You know, I'm a pastor. I've been pastoring for 20 years. So I'm a pastor in many places. So when I say don't say that, it's... Is you all here? But he told me, I want you to pray with me. Anything good coming my way, I am almost getting there. And then something happens. Some of those reasons can happen because of war, war. There is war between, the devil can want to do that. But another reason that can happen, can cause that to happen, is your relationship with your roots. Amen? Hey, in Gumu, is this hard? You need the blessings of your parents. Back home, and even here we have parents. All right? All right? But I'm not just, just talking about our bishop. I know he's our father. And I know you honor him and you respect him. But there are others between you and the bishop. They are still operating in that anointing, that home cell pastor. He may not even be your age, he may be younger than you. But he can carry your blessings. When he says, bless you, you find your life. When you become too difficult for him, I'm a zono pastor, so I have cell pastors under me. And sometimes they come and share with me what they go through with the members. And sometimes I know those members are hindering their blessings. Maybe to bishop they look so good. But because you are not honoring that small anointing, that anointing in your cell back at home, they are, you are hindering your blessings. Hallelujah. Blessings of honor will bypass you. And I told you they don't go back to God. They go to... I once told our church down there, I don't know whether I've ever told you, have I? Have I ever told you? <laughs> I wanted to know whether you are attentive. Now I know you are attentive. That there was a time I was a nasha. And I was sitting behind people being prayed for. And the man of God was so anointed, he would call people from them to come to be prayed for. And one sister was a civil servant like me. I was also a civil servant. And she was called from among the people to come and be prayed for. And she was told the things she will do 
for her to acquire her blessing. You've been praying God to move you from the civil service. Those days, it was not civil service. We used to call ourselves civil servers. Because there was too much man at the head of the money. Not too much money. <laughs> too much man at the head of the money. So when she came, she was told by the man of God what to do before she was prayed for. And in the things she was told to do, I was hearing because I was behind her. I was hearing. One of the things that I can remember today, they ha- we had a big choir that was having the services. She was told to give them refreshments. And remember we are Savaras. <laughs> so out of the non abad is there a word like non abundance? Out of the non abundance of your pocket, you are told to to refresh the choir of about twenty five people. Some few things she was told to do. I want to tell you for sure. I went and did all. I did it myself. I didn't. I was not. He did not call me that man of God. <laughs> so what I did, I went and did what she was told to do. Because I was also going through what she was going through. And we were both praying God to move us from the civil service. I went and started refreshing the choir. In between the services. Some few other things. And one of the blessings of honor that reached me is a lady called Monica. Because she was part of that choir. <laughs> she saw a very generous guy. <laughs> She did not know I was pursuing my. Nikaona ameanza kunismailia vizuri. And one thing added to another. Hallelujah. And we walked down there. Ayo. Hallelujah. That's a big blessing. By the way, let me tell you. You respect me not because I'm called a pastor. It is because she has handled me well. If I came, the day I came from her and you met me, <laughs> this side, <laughs> have you ever met somebody <laughs> and known that there was war at night? You wouldn't, you wouldn't even listen to my messages. We preach more of what we are than what we say. Am I right? So she has been a big blessing. But what God had said he will do to that lady, he did it to me, all of it and beyond. Amen. One of the things he said that she'll become a businessman, business lady, that people will admire. It happened to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said to her she will relocate her to better places. God did that to me. God said I will establish you. He did that to me when I did what was not mine. Hallelujah. So when you don't honor, what happens? Same divine exchange. Divine exchange. I quoted Matthew chapter 10 verse 41. You will receive a prophet's reward. When? When you honor the prophet, you receive a prophet. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet. Reward. Amen. That's what I did. Blessings of honor. And before I go to my last point, God spoken blessings. Allow me to say this. Uh, if who is an usher around me? Not Washa, where? Washa is a pastor. Oh, if this sister, and you don't even know her name, if she says she'll buy you lunch, she'll buy you lunch. It's true. I know her. She's faithful. She'll not lie to you. But of course, you know the kind of lunch you'll be bought. True or false? True or false? You're not agreeing with me. Okay, okay, let me come home. If pastor tells you I'll buy you lunch, I know your kalanji kamekua it has become a little bit heavier. Amen? Hallelujah. If Dr. William Ruto tells pastor, by the way, we said for the same KCSE, and I beat him. When I meet him, I will remind him. <laughs> he got a second division, I got a first division. So I can become a president. <laughs> If he says you'll buy me lunch, you think it's a thousand or ten thousand? Now, when God says you'll receive a prophecy reward, just take it like that. Amen? Because it is God that has said, a prophet 
reward. Amen? Now, can we go to the last one? It's called spoken blessings. Spoken bl- blessings. In the book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 1, I will not read. We see Jacob calling his children to bless them. He did not just keep quiet. Because a closed mouth is a closed destiny. Kindly, be a Jacob. Learn to bless your children with spoken blessings, spoken blessings. And never, never utter a word against your children. Because it will surely come to pass. Even when they are very notorious, even when they have done you the worst thing that can ever happen, please never speak curses against your children. Always speak blessings. So he, Jacob called his 12 sons and he started speaking blessings to them. Of course, some of them like Reuben, he had messed with his father's concubine. So his blessing was you'll be as unstable as a reed, like water in a pot. Unstable. And that's what happened. Until Moses, now the man of God, came and spoke and, and did what, what the father had. Had. And I'll tell you this as the last point. If your father is dead, I say if he's dead, he's not alive, and he spoke curses, please come. Come, come, come to church. Come to your pastors. They will speak, they, they, they will cancel that, right? Are you hearing me? Yeah, they, they have the, God has given us power because now we are, now we are father types. We are able to, to, like Moses did, he canceled and he said, Reuben will live. But it is because Jacob had died long ago. If there are issues between you and your father, don't come to us, go to your father. If you come to us, come to, to, for advice. To help you how to maneuver your way to your father, to your father's heart. Not to come to counsel. I will not counsel when your father is alive. It, is, it will be null and void. But if he died and spoke something and your life has not been going well, come to your pastors. All right? All right? Are you hearing me? And now, Jacob had said, oh, uh, this man Isaac had said, go and hunt, bring me to eat, and I bless you. When you come to our pastors, our parents, you don't just come here with your head like this. At the speak curses, speak blessings, my father. Gee, 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 gee. No, they will speak and nothing will happen. In fact, I would not advise you to come on Sunday. Come to the office. Make an appointment. Come with something. I tell you things that I do. I'm not saying things that I have not done. All right? I want your lives to be better. We cannot talk of the rushing mountains when we are being followed by curses. And you cannot, the fact that something happened between, doesn't necessarily mean you are wrong. Your father might have been wrong, but still uttered those words. I, I don't have the time to tell you. I would have told you about something. I'm still struggling, not mine. I'm still struggling with it as a somebody's pastor. Was the mother separated from the father or divorced? I don't want to say about it. And the, 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 the lady did not honor the father because of the vitriol that had been poured by the mother towards her. She ignored the father completely, even when she was getting married. And the father said, you'll come looking for me. We are still looking for him. We have not yet succeeded. I've been to her home twice. I even carried a pastor friend of mine to go and help me talk to the Father. Of course, we shall succeed because God is with us. Amen? But it has been a struggle for years, not months. Life has not been good. Of course, they don't belong here. I've told you I've been a pastor for many years. So I'm still somebody's pastor even when they are far. Don't start thinking. When you see a sister talking to me, you start saying, this is the, <laughs> this is the sister he meant. No, 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 please. What have I been speaking about? Blessings. Blessings. What have I said? Seven types of? Blessings. Number one. Now you have to raise up your heart. I was a school teacher. I still am. <laughs> Number one. You can say, you don't have to follow what I said. You can just say one. one another one. 
Commanded blessings. Amen. Thank you. Promised blessings. There are promises that belong to us. Fight, fight for them because they belong to. Now, somebody at the back. Demanded. Demand your mountain. Give me Mount Hebron. Moses had said it when we went spying and I brought a good report. Give me this mountain. It, was my, it is mine. If he did not do that, he would not have been given. Mount, in Heb- Mount Hebron. Joshua would not. He knew, but he had even forgotten. Thank you. Sir. Spoken. Spoken. Thank you, sir. I love this man. When he's speaking, I feel good. You bless me. Together, your wonderful and beautiful wife. Clap for them. <laughs> Spoken. Spoken blessings. Speak. Don't keep quiet. When I was in primary school, those of you that are my age, we used to be called many names by our teacher. I don't know. I don't understand whether our teachers were whatever. <laughs> but they would call us things that I cannot imagine. And some of us became what we were being called. Because we believed in them. Call your children the way you want them to become. To become. Speak them. If you want them to be a minister, call them minister. Minister Daniel. If you want them to be a bishop, call them. We have a bishop in our house. <laughs> yes, we do. Although this morning as we came, I was challenging him. <laughs> Are we still having a bishop in the house? Of course, that is. Shemushi <laughs> Hallelujah. Spoken? Speak forth. Are you hearing me? Speak forth and let them hear. Because a closed mouth is a closed destiny. If they want to become a doctor, start calling them doctor. Dr. Jane, Dr. John. Right? Of course, don't, don't force them to become what you want. Let them choose for themselves. But if they say a doctor, keep calling them. It will become. Because you have power over their lives. More than us, even our pastors. Good. Thank you, sir. Uh, last one. Service blessings. I was anointed the same day with this woman of God. She can tell you. We, we were there. We knelt down together. Through all of us. But she reports this place Monday through to Friday. So at the end of the month, I see her smiling to the bank. <laughs> For her service, Blessings. Myself. <laughs> I check from far. <laughs> Why? Because I don't report here. So there are no service blessings for me. Where? At yeah. ah, Let me finish there. Have you heard or have you just seen me? Yeah. Has God spoken to you? Yes. Thank you. Go and do. When you do, you'll have passed with an A+. Plus. Because application... Makes all the difference? All. Thank you.